Hi, I'm Gary. My wife Robbie and I live in Southern California. We're in Sunset Zone 23, USDA Zone 10A. And today I'm going to set up my planter. This is the tub out of a front loading washing machine. I picked up a couple of washing machines and a couple of dryers from a free ad that was posted online. And I disassembled a few of them. Last year I grew some purple yams along here, or ubes, Dioscoria alata. They did okay, they didn't do as well as they did in some of the other locations. This year I'm going to plant Korean melons, and I'm also going to plant elephant food. I'm going to take the cuttings and use this as a nursery until the root system starts to develop. Then I can transplant them and plant them where I want them. This front-loading tub has too many holes in the side. These are eight of an inch holes and this is too well drained. The problem with this location here is we're on the top of a retaining wall and there's a layer or a, literally a wall of rock behind it that's been backfilled for drainage. So the water will flow down to the retaining wall go down behind the retaining wall and out through the weep holes at the bottom. So the ground here is too well drained. Another problem that I've got here is I've got a pine tree behind me that sends out invasive roots. So everywhere I water, it's going to find the water and I don't want to constantly water, so I'd rather grow in tubs along here. We've had a couple of questions about growing in tubs. People are wondering why I like washing machines and dishwashers. They hold quite a bit of soil and you can plant them, protect them from any invasive roots and they also, also create a microclimate. In order to make this a little less free draining, I'm going to cut up some of these cut flower tubs that we got from a local florist. On the bottom of the plastic tubs, there's a plastic recycling number. This number is five. It's also got a PP underneath that. That makes it polypropylene. Polypropylene is used in yogurt containers and other food grade containers. Robbie has a number of videos up on the number system. What I'm going to do is cut these down and fit them to the bottom. This is lightweight plastic. We've recycled them. Some of them are split and broken, so I'm going to get a third use out of them. We've already used them to collect rainwater. And what I'll do is I'll line these, I'll cut them and line them in the bottom of the washing machine so that the water will be able to flow down on the inside and out the bottom and this will retain the moisture a lot better. So I'm going to do that. I'm using an inexpensive pair of heavy duty scissors. They're usually around a dollar or two. You can pick them up in a lot of different places. So I'm just going to put these around the outside edges and backfill it with soil. The tubs are actually shallower than my planter, so when I pushed them down, I put, lifted them up to the surface, so there'll be soil along the bottom, and then there'll be a layer of plastic, and the water will just sheet down on the inside and out the bottom as drainage. The soil that I'm using, I sifted, I prefer to sift my soil 
That way I can remove any large rocks and pieces of glass and anything that might damage my, either myself or the plants. I don't want to fill this all the way to the top because at the end I want to put a layer of wood chips. The wood chips I also sifted. I prefer to sift the wood chips because that way I'm getting all the finer material that's already broken down. The finer material is mainly the leaves and the stems. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now I just have to top it up with sifted wood chips. Now I just have to water this in and when the Korean melons are ready to plant, this is ready to go. I might have to put some wire along the top to stop the rabbits coming in. But this is my first dip washing machine planter that I've done. Even though it's small, it should be able to grow a lot of food for me. The spot where I've set up this planter is isolated. The surrounding soil is bone dry and dusty, so there's not going to be a lot of earthworms around here. So to put earthworms into my planter, I borrowed one of Robbie's pots and I'm just going to bury it down to the holes that are around the base. And make sure those holes are under the wood chips. It's good to have a spouse that's smart and also gardens. Robbie's covered some of these planters and some of these pots in some of the videos. What will happen is this was sitting in her garden. It has earthworms moving in and out of it. And now that I've brought it down here, the earthworms will have a passive way of getting into the planter. And if they don't like it up here, they can move down into the planter. And this will seed the planter. The earthworms will break down the wood chips and they'll have plenty to feed on and then they'll carry that into the soil and that will improve the soil in the pot. So basically I started off with the clay and now I'm going to have a really good soil. I set up these dishwashing planters a few years ago. I've set them up along my walkways and along my staircase down to my garden. I'm growing purple yams or ubes in them as well as mini bell peppers. The ube is starting to take off up the avocado tree again. I consider this back to Eden gardening in a miniature scale. The planters hold about eight cubic feet and I've been very happy with the way the soil's broken down. I had to put the wire around the top of them to protect them from the rabbits because the rabbits can get into the planters down here. It's still out in the open. There's my new planter, my washing machine. This is how the soil is starting to look as I'm working with it. It's breaking down to rich organic soil and I'm really happy with the results. So all in all, this is what I would call back to Eden Gardening. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, feel free to subscribe to our channel. That's Robbie and Gary. Thanks for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow.